Define irony. The death of a cleric in a church. Greetings and salutations gamers, my name is Kyle, also known as Gamers Weekend, and welcome to the next Dark Souls challenge. Last time, we beat every boss with sorcery, which turned out to be pretty easy, especially with Dark Bead. Today, we are tackling the same challenge, except this time, it's miracles only. The challenge is going to be a lot more complicated for a few reasons, but we'll get into that later. For now, let's go over the rules. First off, my damage must come from miracles, no melee weapons, damaging items, or other forms of magic allowed. This time, the challenge officially begins when I arrive in Firelink Shrine and ends upon beating the game. However, I'm still going to at least attempt to beat every single boss. And of course, no glitches allowed for this run. With all that out of the way, this is the Dark Souls Miracle Only Challenge. We name our character Mira, short for Miracles, and quickly get through the Asylum so we can begin our challenge. And right away, we've hit a wall. Unlike the Sorcery Challenge, we don't start with a damaging spell. Instead, we get a heal spell, which can be nice, but ultimately means we have zero damage for now. We need to get a way to deal damage soon if we want to make any progress. I've got an idea on how we can get through this, though. I head down into the Catacombs to join the Gravelord Covenant. One of its Covenant rewards is the Gravelord Sword Dance, an area of effect miracle that has no faith requirement. Now that we have Gravelord Sword Dance, we can technically do damage, but this thing really isn't getting us anywhere. It's extremely inconsistent to hit things with, lacks meaningful damage, and only can be casted twice before running out. We need a bit more consistency to get through the game right now. That in mind, I decide the best course of action is to start heading to the Undead Parish. Down through New Londo and Valley of Drakes, make a stop to grab the Grass Crest Shield and rest up by Andre. We also make sure to talk to Siegmeier in front of the Bounce House to set up his quest. This will be important later. I make sure to grab the Firekeeper's soul in the church and head through the gate. We get underneath the bridge, set up the Berg Ladder, and rest up at the Sunlight Altar. We unlock access to the lower Berg, go anger Kevin the Dragon, and now I'm officially set up. I may not be able to do any damage, but I can still farm for souls here. By baiting the dragon into an attack on the bridge, he kills all the Hollow Soldiers, giving us 555 souls. We reset at the bonfire, rinse, and repeat. It takes about 10 minutes of using this soul farming method, but eventually we get enough souls to reach 25 faith. Now we can join the Sunlight Warriors Covenant, which gives us Lightning Spear, a long range lightning miracle that does pretty hefty damage at this point in the game. Now we are much better prepared, so it's bossing time. Taurus Demon is a joke with lightning spears. He barely lives after three lightning spears, and the fourth one brings him down. After that, we head into the church to. After that, we head into the church and onto the roof to take out the gargoyles. First one goes down after three spears, and the second one goes down after two. These early game bosses are all weak to lightning, so this early game should go by pretty fast. That's bell number one, down. Next up might be a bit more difficult though, because we are up against the Capra Demon. Just like any other magic challenge, the dogs cause a ton of issues. They land a hit, and our very slow casting lightning spears are interrupted. I decided to go grab the Ring of Favor and Protection from Lortric to add just a little more safety to the fight. I won't be able to wear it for the entire run, but it'll serve me well for now. Back to Capra. I managed to snipe the first dog just fine, but the second one is a bit problematic. I decided to trade a hit with the Capra Demon in exchange for killing his mutt. After that, it's just a few Lightning Spears later, and he's crossed off the list. The main reason I'm here to take out Capra Demon is to progress the Thoriland Party Quest. Beating Capra Demon triggers them to move into the Tomb of the Giants, so that's where we will be heading next. Pinwheel... happens, and we venture into the tomb. Patches gives us a good kick to the rear, and we are officially where we need to be. We take out the first Thoralund Cleric with Lightning Spears, and reenact 300 on the second one. With that, Rhea is now freed, and she heads to the Parish Church. We need to make sure we take out Petrus though, so he won't kill Rhea, and we can buy Wrath of the Gods from her. Now, we are really armed and ready. Wrath of the Gods, or WOG for short, is a powerful area of effect spell that knocks back and does damage, but can only be casted three times. Side note, I love the difference in naming miracles compared to other magics. Soul Arrow is pretty straightforward in comparison to Tranquil Walk of Peace or Karmic Justice. Pyromancers have literally Fireball, while Clerics have Wrath of the Gods. Did that sound like a metal band to anyone else? Right now, our damage is really carrying us, but I'm a bit nervous for later in the game. I decided to quickly run into Valley of the Drakes again for a red tearstone ring. 
I have a feeling we'll need it later, and it'll be helpful in the next couple of bosses. Next up is a quick detour to take out Gaping Dragon, but as always, we need to take out the Channeler before we... Well, that was easier than last time. No, 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 no! I go ahead and set up RTS for Gaping Dragon. Avoiding damage is very easy on this boss, and empowered by our ring, we do more than enough damage. Three wogs and four spears, and the dragon is officially slain. Next up is to head down to Blight Town. The Poison Swamp makes it very easy to set up Red Tearstone Ring. The fight goes pretty easy, but I'm starting to notice our damage output is dropping. This could get pretty bad soon if our damage doesn't see any noticeable upgrades. Meanwhile though, that's another bell of awakening rung. While we're down here, we quickly pick off Ceaseless Discharge for the extra souls as well. Afterwards, we take out the heretic of the melee ways, Andre, and head into Dark Root. Moonlight Butterfly eats five lightning spears before going down, and then we head for the Danger Doggo. Sif isn't too bad, although he does have the ability to rush us down while we are casting our miracles and dodge them as well. However, RNGs has gifted us good RNG on this day, and we get through this fight just fine. The bounce house is business as usual, but we need to make a quick pit stop to talk to Siegmeier again. I want to make sure his quest is progressing just fine. Afterwards, his usual climb to the top to take out the Iron Golem. Using the archer just outside is an easy RTS setup. A combination of Wog and Lightning Spears, and the Iron Golem plummets to his demise. Afterwards, I take a moment to grab the Rare Ring of Sacrifice for later and head into An Orlando. At this point, we've crested 40 Faith, so hopefully that prepares our damage for this next section. Lightning Spears turn the rafters into a casual breeze, so we can use the rotating Londo platform to head into the Dark Moon Tomb. This is where we can grab the Ring of the Sun's Firstborn, a ring that boosts power of miracles. Now we don't need to rely on Tearstone all the time... yet. Either way, we easily walk past the archers and head into the keep. We've got a few orders of business here. First off is a chest of three sunlight medals. We'll need those for later. Next is to head to the roof and down into a bedroom to complete the next step of Onion Bro's quest. This is the last step we really need to complete, but to collect our reward we need to find him in Firelink, so that's gonna have to wait for now. Now it's time for Smoff and Ornstein, and now we get to see how rough this challenge can be. Smoff and Ornstein, as many of you know, are weak to fire and lightning respectively. However, you may not have known that when one of the bosses enters their second form, they get huge resistance bonuses. The Anor Orlando Bros are also very good at punishing your mistakes, hence bringing us to the two issues with miracles only. We have 10 spears and 3 walks. That's not a lot of spells to cast, and if we run out, then our attempt at whatever boss we are fighting is gone. The other issue is miracles take a very long time to cast, so getting rushed down is bound to happen. So to compensate for our lack of damage, we need to use Red Tearstone, but to be under RTS effects, we need to be within one shot range, whilst using miracles that make us vulnerable. This isn't gonna be fun. On attempt number 9, we finally get a good run where we manage to land three Tearstone Wogs on Ornstein, sending the boss into phase 2. Smoff is going to be resistant to our Lightning Spears, but with RTS, we are eventually able to kite him down and overpower him for the KO. Ornstein and Smoff are almost always problems, but things are not looking great for our run. We collect the Lord Vessel, kill Lady Big Boobs, and move on. Next up is Gwendolyn, and this is going to be a lot easier. Chasing him down is as easy as usual, and he has a small health bar. Three Wogs and two Lightning Spears give us another boss kill. Afterwards, we quickly head back to Firelink Shrine to find Siegmeier, who has given us the Emit Force Miracle. It's a ranged miracle that detonates into an area of effect explosion. It's not quite as strong as Wrath of Gods, but it still does decent damage, and more importantly, it's more available spell casts. After that, the Lord Vessel gets placed, and it's time for the late game. I'm going to be real here, I'm really not sure about my damage output right now. Emit Force is a good upgrade, but I really need some more substance. I backtrack to Sen's Bounce House to grab the Covetous Gold Serpent's Ring. It's time for a little bit of farming. I head to the depths in order to grab some humanity off the rats. I need 30 in order to open the door to the Lost Isolith, so I can farm some enemies in the area. After a few minutes, I've collected what I need and take them down to the Chaos Servant Covenant. Before I gift all my humanities, I quickly decide to take out Fire Sage Demon for some extra sprites to have on hand. Fire Sage decides to be incredibly annoying today for some reason, and keeps jumping everywhere. 
The fight takes longer than it should have, but he goes down nonetheless. Time to head back to the Chaos Servants Covenant. I turn in my 30 human dank juice to rank up in the Covenant so I can open the Isolith shortcut. I then made the stupid decision for some reason to kill the Firekeeper for her soul. I head down to the door and realize that I've made a critical error. You see, if you kill a Covenant member, it counts as an act of betrayal, which I completely forgot about for some reason. Betrayal penalties make you rank down in the Covenant ranking, so I essentially just spent 30 humanities on nothing. This is easily the second biggest mistake I made this run. Let's see how many of you can guess my biggest one. Well, now that the door doesn't open, it looks like I'm going to have to do this from the other side, which means Centipede Demon is next. The fight isn't too bad though. You can lure him to the right side where he'll be in close range. A couple wogs and emit force later and he goes down. Now that we have access to the Lost Isolith, we can officially open the shortcut back to the Demon Runes. Now we can finally start farming for Sunlight Metals. The small bugs here have a somewhat small chance to drop them, but with active humanity and gold serpent's ring, they drop fairly commonly. After about 15 minutes of farming, we eventually get up to 10 sunlight medals. We can take those back to the altar of sunlight in order to get great lightning spear, which is quite literally lightning spear, but better. This adds another 10 spell cast to our arsenal, which makes me much more confident about our boss killing capabilities. Time to finish up the Isolith section and take out the bed of chaos. We head to the orb on the left first and reset the boss fight. We do the right orb second because it's the safer. Ugh. Because it's the safer. <laughs> because it is the safer. Who thought this stupid tree gimmick was a good idea? Right orb down, through the middle, boss is dead. One lord sold down, and I can finally leave this stupid nightmare of an area. Now that the literal bane of my existence is out of the way, we can crow uber our way back to the asylum. Stray Demon is beefy, but I'm holy and ready to hand out smites like business cards. Another boss down, and while we're here we grab the peculiar doll. We head back through the catacombs and into the Tomb of the Rave Lords. We make sure to pick up the Silver Serpent's Ring on the way in case we need to do some soul farming later. Time for Nito. I've noticed in the past a lot of people don't know how to deal with Nito's ranged attack, so here's a quick tip. You want to dodge the attack as he's thrusting the sword into the ground, as if you were dodging the blade. That's the best way to avoid the attack. Anyways, once he's close range, we have more than enough damage without RTS to finish him off. Cross Lord Soul number 2 off our list. Time to head into the Painted World for Priscilla. While she's invisible, it's easy to hit her with Wrath of Gods, but not quite enough to kill her. It takes some skill with freehand lightning spears, but eventually we land our marks and take her out. Before heading to the Duke's archives, we take out the Hydra in the Basin, which is extremely easy with miracles. We also free the Duck of Quackaseal in order to set up the DLC. Once we are in the archives, we make sure to grab the Broken Pendant off the Golem and head to Seath for our quote-unquote mandatory death. You may have been immune to Sorcery Snake, but you sure as hell ain't invulnerable to the Wrath of the Gods. On our way out of the prison, we make sure to grab the Maiden's Robes. These will come in handy pretty soon. We get through the archives and through the caves, no issue, into the Seath boss fight. The real reason we wanted these Maiden Robes is despite their poor resistances, they actually have fairly good curse resistance. This gives us a lot of safety for this fight. Add that with the fact that Seath is naturally weak to lightning and this fight actually goes pretty smoothly. Lord Soul number 3 is ours. We are officially down to 5 more bosses, and I know I'm probably going to need to take off the Ring of Favor Protection to fight the 4 kings, so I want to see if I can extend its lifespan a little longer. That in mind, it's DLC time. The DLC is a miracles only playthrough worst nightmare. All of the bosses have lots of resistances, move really fast, and are amazing at punishing mistakes. This is not going to be easy. First up is Sanctuary Guardian. I was actually pretty afraid of this boss's ability to rush you down, but our miracles range was a huge factor here. We ended up spending most of this fight exchanging lightning spells, and slowly but surely we took the victory on our first try. I'm not getting my hopes up though, cause first try is not going to happen again, I can already see it. We make it through the Garden of Hell and encounter what I consider the first of the three titans of this run, Artorius. This is where the difficulty is really going to ramp up. Artorius is fast, can dodge your spells, has easy to land combos, and worst of all has the ability to buff himself, making some of his moves clean one-shots. 
In regular runs, you're supposed to rush him down while he's channeling the buff and stagger him out of it. However, our spells don't pack nearly enough of a punch in order to stop him. If he decides the buff, there's nothing I can do about it but clench my butt cheeks and hope for the best. After seven attempts at this boss, I've decided that the Fap Ring just isn't carrying its weight anymore. That in mind, I've decided to come back for Artorius later and take out the Four Kings. Wow, I just kind of realized the irony of that. Leaving the Abyss Walker for the Abyss. Huh. Anyways, as many of you know, the Four Kings is simply a DPS test, and with our miracle power combined with the Ring of the Sun's Firstborn, we definitely passed. That's the final Lord Soul down, now it's just time to clean up the DLC bosses. This is going to be rough. Two more attempts later and I finally got my rhythm down. I think I'm finally starting to notice a theme with these DLC bosses on this run. Patience is everything. You have to wait for the right attacks or these bosses are going to rip you asunder. Only two more bosses to go. We make our way through the township, picking up the Silver Pendant and Crest Key along the way, and make it into the Chasm of the Abyss. The next boss for me to try is Manus, and all I can say is welcome to hell. This boss is already a pain with regular combat, and punishing his attacks is already tight timing as it is. Now think about trying to punish a fast moving, rapid attacking boss with ridiculous range with slow casting miracles. It's about as much fun as it sounds. To make matters worse, I come to an awful realization after a few attempts. I don't have enough damage to finish this boss with regular spell casts. Just a Ring of Sun's Firstborn as a buff, I don't have the power to quite finish off this boss. Which means now I have to do an already difficult boss in RTS range. Which means I have to fight him with about that much health. This is going to be absurd. Roll a fraction of a second too late or too early and it's death. Get caught in a combo and it's death. React to his magic attacks too slowly or in the wrong way and it's death. If I'm going to get through this fight, it has to be perfect. I was already pretty tired by the time I got to Manus, and after 11 attempts at the boss fight, I realized this isn't happening right now and just decided to go to bed. Giving it some time to think about, I decided it would be a good idea to grind. With Miracles, we have access to the best soul farming method in the game, Undead Phalanx. The idea is in Painted World, you run up to these Phalanx, cast an area of effect magic to quickly kill them all, and then reset them at the bonfire. It's about 100,000 souls every 5 minutes using this method. With our souls, we put some more levels into faith to increase our power by a small amount. I decided it would be a good idea to see if Calamite would be any easier, and it's not going to be that much better. Calamite's resistances are off the charts, so there's no chance we are beating it with just regular spell casts either. So for both of these bosses, we have two options. Dust Crown Ring to increase our spell cast in exchange for half of our health, or Red Tearstone Ring to increase our damage in exchange for having to play perfect. I think our best bet on Calamy is to use Dusk Ring, because even at half HP we can still survive some of his attacks. Manus, on the other hand, will probably kill us anyways at half HP, so I might as well shorten the fight with Red Tearstone damage. Initially, I tried to take on Calamite up close, but I realized after some time that this boss has a really easy time interrupting our spell casts. I changed up my strategy to take him on from afar, and it works out much better. On attempt number 14, this fight gets a bit weird. His initial attack comes in at a bit of a weird angle thanks to a mid-air slide, and then I somehow barely managed to survive a barrage of attacks. How I survived most of these, I have no clue. Eventually the fight stabilizes though, and I get back into my groove. The fight goes on for several minutes, but eventually I grind away his health bar and take him out. All that means is I have one more boss left before I can finish the game, but unfortunately that last boss is making more attempts at Manus. Remember when I said that this DLC requires patience? Well, I'm pretty sure that Manus requires ungodly amounts of patience. My plan to get through this fight is to start off with Red Tearstone to chunk out most of his health, and then heal up to finish off the fight with regular power spells. This is way easier said than done though. Finally, on attempt number 39, an hour and a half worth of attempts, I eventually get his health bar to a decent enough spot with RTS and heal up. By this point, I am more than aware of what attacks I can and can't respond to. Finally, after almost 40 attempts on the boss, I take him out. 
I want you to know how happy I was to finally beat this boss. I think I stress drank through two two liter bottles of Dr. Pepper and three venti Starbucks drinks. I drank so much trying to beat this boss and I was so freaking happy to just finally beat him. Just one more boss to go, Gwyn. I expected him to be stupidly easy, but I'll admit it, I underestimated this fight. Gwyn is really good at interrupting spell casts, so this fight is a bit more dicey than I anticipated. Fighting him directly isn't going to happen right now, so I need to find a new strategy. I decided to see if there's another way I can boost my damage and... Oh god, I feel stupid. So for those of you who watched my last run may remember that I picked up the Dust Crown, which I said boosted our magic damage, and I wasn't wrong. But what I forgot about the item is it's a magic adjustment booster, not a magic damage booster. For those of you who don't know, anytime you cast a spell in this game, it gets casted with a catalyst, which determines the damage. The stat that determines the damage of said spell is called Mag Adjust or Magic Adjustment. Higher magic adjustment means higher damage. And for some reason, I forgot that Dust Crown is an increase to magic adjustment, not magic damage. So I could have been using this thing the entire time. Literally since probably Capra Demon, I could have been using this buff. That is the huge mistake I mentioned earlier, and I feel both stupid for making it, yet accomplished that I got this far without it. Either way, I grab the Dust Crown, get some Elizabeth Mushrooms from Ulaseal, and don my best tank armor. I've got a pretty good idea on how to deal with Gwyn. Elizabeth Mushrooms give ungodly health regen, and combined with our armor resistance, Gwyn can swing that flaming sword all he wants, he's not killing us. With the added poise from the stone armor, he can't interrupt our spellcast either, so we absolutely power through this fight in the most chad way possible. And with that victory, we have officially beaten every boss in Dark Souls using only miracles. Okay, I'll be the first to admit it, I underestimated this challenge. After Sorcery Only went so well, I thought this was going to be a lot easier than it actually was. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't ungodly difficult by any stretch of the imagination, but surprisingly, it was challenging. I do feel somewhat proud for getting through as much as I did without Dust Crown, but I do still feel a bit dumb for not grabbing it earlier. Anyways, next time we are taking a break from Magic Runs to do a viewer suggested run. Next time will be Can You Beat Dark Souls with Only Shields. Big thanks to Arcane Manticore for the suggestion, and speaking of which, if you have a suggestion for anything you'd like to see, let me know. It could be difficult, wacky, or something that requires lots of strategy. Any kind of ideas you guys have got, leave it in the comment section below and I'll be sure to look it over. Either way though, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, bop that subscribe button, and ring a tingling that little bell to be notified whenever I drop the next video. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you gamers on the flip side. Later!